For those of you who don't know, I'm a huge fan of Sonic the Hedgehog. It was the first computer game I played through and through and it's still one that I constantly play today. It was on the Sega Mega Drive and I still remember Sega. I still have it on my phone and to this day I play it when I'm bored. So having a movie based around it is something that I look forward to. And the fact that they've changed it, changed the character to make it more to make it look like him more is better. So for this tutorial I'm breaking down the hand scanner effect as done by Jim Carrey in the trailer. Let's get started. Hey guys, if you're new here, my name is Om and I make videos every Monday at 12 o'clock breaking down VFX shots. It's probably stuff you wanted to learn in uni but never could, so why not hit the subscribe button? Open After Effects and let's jump straight into it. I've managed to quickly remove the laser and just keep the hand print in. You can see here, I've not done a perfect job because the glow is still on his hand, but to do this example, it's fine. So, after you have your original clip, I pre-comped it and turned it into a background. You right click and select New Solid and make sure it's black. And I'm going to rename it as Laser 1. In the effects and presets panel, there's a free plugin that I've mentioned before in my Star Wars lightsaber breakdown. It's called Video Copilot's Saber Plugin. Drag and drop this onto the solid layer. In the saber settings, change preset to narrow, change the color to what you'd like. I'm going to change it to a bright red. And in the composition, change mode to add. And you should have this straight line. If I hide the background, which I'm going to do on and off to reveal the original video as an example, which I'm going to do throughout this tutorial, I can see that I've kind of got a color match, but for the one I have. For the first two frames, I just need a straight line. So I'm going to change the core start and the core end points and increase the core size to round about 2.7 and the glow bias to 1.71. Uh, 0 0.71 sorry uh, 0.80 that's a bit better okay as I only need this straight line for two frames I'm going to keyframe the core start and core end once I'm happy with it move across one frame and move the position of these Brill. I'm going to duplicate this as a, when the scanner hits the ground it creates a line connects with the ground and all I need to do here is change the core start and core end keyframes. As it's too thick, I'm going to change the core size down to one. Perfect. The next step is to create another layer, another duplicate, but this is where the scanner changes into a triangle shape and splits into two. But what I did was created a new solid, named it laser three, change the blend mode to add so I can see what I'm doing and then drew a mask using the pen tool to show where I'd like Saber light to come from. Then in the Saber settings, change the preset to narrow, the color to red, and then under custom core, change core type from Saber to layer mask. This will now follow the mask layer. Perfect. Next thing I need to do is go back into the comp and click on the path stop button. Again, don't forget to do this because it's a pain. You, because it's a pain, you can go forward and change it several times, and After Effects hasn't recorded anything. As this is a short clip, it'll be easy to go through frame by frame, following the direction the scanner goes. Move the mask over the footprint. So go ahead one frame. Using the pen tool, change the mask. Be careful as this mask is not closed, you can accidentally tend to close it. Perfect, when you have laser three done, you can duplicate the layer and go through frame by frame to match up the, the other scan laser on the other side. Perfect, once you're happy with that, watch it through and tweak it where necessary, like here where I'm doing around the thumb area. Perfect. We now have the scanner 
but we need the footprint highlighter to show that this hand scanner is actually scanning something. So what you need to do is draw around the foot using two masks. Using the same settings, to do this, duplicate layer uh, laser 4 and I'm going to rename it as laser footprint. I'm going to delete the masks and set up two new ones for each side of the foot. Make sure they don't meet and close together. The reason for this is, as the scanner goes over the foot, two lines will form and they will join together to create the outline of the footprint. Animate these lines to fit inside the scanner. As the scanner grows, the shape of the, the outline of the footprint will also form. Pro tip here, when you're starting to draw the outline of the foot, go to the bit where, the foot, where all the foot is drawn in and draw your mask. Then work your way backwards and forwards to follow, to make sure you're inside of the scanner. Also, with this, you do not have to do frame by frame as After Effects is quite clever and if you do keyframes one or two off, it'll realize and join the keyframes together. Perfect. So we have the scanner and the outline of the foot when the scanner hits the ground. Perfect. Next, when the scanner hits the foot, there is very subtly, but there is a grid line that forms. To do this, start a new solid layer. I'm going to rename it as grid and in effects and presets panel, type grid and under generate, drag and drop this onto the new solid. First thing we're going to change in settings is size form from corner point to width, width slider. Now with this, you can make the squish squares as big as you want or as small as you want. I'm going to do 91 and go down to the color and change it to red. Perfect. Now there's a few ways you can match this in. You can mask it, you can turn it into a 3D object, or you can layer on top. Okay, while I did this next step, I didn't realize um, QuickTime had crashed and my screen recording had gone. What I did is I had the original grid layer, change the blend mode to screen, and place this in the background, above the ground layer, but under his hand. Then using the pre cromp I drew a mask turned it into 3D and positioned it into place using the X, Y, Z positions and the orientation to match it as best as I could to the ground. The only, the only other thing I did was using the mask I created, I animated it following the laser and made it grow over the whole of the ground and then back on itself and then in to make it to make the effect better i added a feather of five of 50 percent bro we're almost there but we have a few more elements okay we're kind of getting there but there's a few things when i hit when the laser hits my ground it's a solid line so it doesn't feel like it's actually connecting with the ground the original version the line at the bottom distorts to do that right click and right click new adjustment layer and in effects and presets type in turbulence turbulent displace and drag and drop this onto the layer from there draw a mask around where the laser hits the ground i've got one at the bottom and two at the top as i don't want the displacement to affect the laser coming from the hand coming from his hand Brill. so i have three in total then in settings, I'm going to change the amount from 50 to 30. Perfect. Next thing you need to do is just keyframe these to follow the scanner. I moved and all the layers into a pre crop by highlighting them all, right clicking and selecting pre comp and changing the name to scanner. last thing I want to do is add a blur to the laser layer. So right click new adjustment layer. In the effects and presets type in Gaussian blur and drag and drop this. I'm going to change it from 0 to 8. It's only very subtle. 
Finally, honestly, the last thing to do for this hand scanner is right click new solid and choose the red color as choose the same color as the laser, which for me is red. Then add in the pre effects and presets panel, add type glow and drag and drop this onto the solid layer. Draw a mask around the area where you'd like the glow to be. One mask will not be enough. I did four. Experimented with the feather and ended up bl blending them all in. Change the blend mode to screen and draw a mask around the areas where you'd like the glow to be affected. For me, the most important area is the hand, then the ground on either side of the footprint. I started off with small masks and eventually realized they needed to be blended in together while also feathering them out. I feathered each mask by 65, then click T on your keyboard and change the opacity down to 30. 30, 33 ish, and then animate the masks coming in and following the hand print. Follow and following the hand as a video for your holidays. I hope you like this video, guys. I'm thinking of breaking down a glitch effect next week. Let me know what you think via my socials or the comments below. As always, smash the like button, hit the subscribe button. It's free, so why not? And stay inspired. Let's get started.